Welcome to my office and welcome to another mythology video. Bit of an unusual location today, but it's the right location for this video. Have a look around. So there's lots and lots of gadgets, mathematical puzzles, twisty puzzles there, Rubik's cubes. For decades I've been collecting these, but also I've been making a lot of these things myself. And just recently I got back into making things. And I discovered something new. I discovered this little gadget here. Uh, it's made up from dice, eight of them. It's a compound shape. And well, to explain to you what's so special about it, let me remind you of a few things that you may or may not know. So first thing is, oh, you all know this, right? <laughs> Opposite sides add up to what? Seven. Very good. Very good. Seven. Okay, seven. All right, everybody knows that. But what about this one here? So in properly produced dice, if you look at one of the corners, we see one, two, and three, and they're kind of going in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so that's a properly produced dice. If you get something from the shop that's not like this, just return it straight away. Okay? <laughs> okay, so now I take eight of those and put them together like this so that always the one, two, three shows the fours, fives, and sixes, they're hidden inside. Okay? So you can kind of look at this. It's always the one, two, and three shows. And then there's another thing that I made sure of is that the threes are on opposite sides. So there's one side of threes and there's another side of threes. Okay. Okay, now these are not just glued together. They're actually put together in a special way that uses a Rubik's Cube design that predates Rubik's original design. So that came in in like 1972, I think. But there was a patent filed in 1970, which is magnet-based. So this one here is actually, it's got magnets in it. So I actually drilled into these cubes and embedded magnets to make this work. And just to give you a better view of what's actually happening here, here's another version of this. So if I just take it apart, you can see North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, right? And just got to look at it. So the blue is going to go on the red everywhere, right? So it's going to fit perfectly together like this, right? But not only in this position, but also whenever I scramble like this, it's going to be perfectly aligned. So you can kind of really scramble this like a Rubik's cube. Okay? All right, so let's just do this. Okay, so what's special about this? Well, let's do it. So I kind of scramble, scramble, right? It's a scramble list, for example. So at any point in time, what you do is you look at um, well, two opposite sides and count the dots, okay? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, okay? If I keep on going and if I count again, I might come up with 15 or 18 or 21. And so now these are special numbers, right? So 12, 15, 18, 21. What do they all have in common? They're multiples of three. Very good. Very good. <laughs> They're all multiples of three, okay? And actually, it's not that hard to see why. And it's got to do with me putting all the threes here and things going in a counterclockwise direction. Actually, what I'll do is I'll leave it to you to come up with a good justification for why this works. And actually, uh, you don't have to build one of these things or, you know, buy one. You can't really buy one. <laughs> I've also made a software version of this. Okay, so here again is like one, two, three. This time in numbers, always counterclockwise direction. And I've highlighted two opposing, opposite faces with these windows. And so now what this number here is always showing is how many or what these numbers here add up to on these opposite sides. So let's just do it, okay? So let's just do the, the top, okay? So change it into 18, or maybe here we do the right, change it to 15, maybe the whole cube, right? highlighting two different sides. Use the 18 again. And you keep on going like this. And as I said, you always get these numbers. And you can, you know, just play with this. Come up with a justification for why you always have a sum of, a sum that's divisible by three. Okay. And just leave your justification in the comments. That would be good. All right. Now that's in itself is something nice, but actually you can use this to prove something at a glance, something that's fairly well, well known. <laughs> uh, let's just do this. So what I've done here is I've actually transferred this pattern of dots onto a real two by two by two. And now if I scramble this, okay, so if I scramble it like this, scramble, 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 scramble. Well, then, you know, you always have this opposite sides add up to something that's divisible by three. That's fine. But now let's do something that we're not supposed to do. Let's just 
do an illegal move like this. I've just twisted the corner, okay? So what's happened here? Well, at the moment, this three here adds to a sum that is divisible by three. But if I, for example, twist like this, then the three turns into a two, and the sum will be one less than what it was before, so no longer divisible by three, okay? So what does that show? What does that prove? No longer solvable. That's right. All right. So if you've got a, a cube like this, right, and you twist the corner like that, then no matter what you try with legal moves, you can't go back to solve. It's impossible. Right? And so this little gadget here shows this at a glance. So I mean, I think that's, that's, that's quite neat, right? A, a physical one glance proof. Very rare. Okay, well, it's not the only thing I made. Uh, there's also this little gadget here. Um, and I'll just show it to you here. Okay. So what that is, is a cube, a three by three by three, and I've stripped off all the stickers. Okay, so I've stripped off all the stickers, but now I've put other stickers back on, and there's going to be two stickers per side. Okay, two stickers per side. And when you have a close look here, like for the edge pieces, for the edge pieces, one has a sticker on it and the other one is blank here. One has a sticker on it, the other one's blank. And that's going to be the case for all edge pieces. All right, so there's going to be, well, there is 12 edge pieces. And so in total, there is also 12 of those stickers. Okay, now where the stickers are, I kind of put windows. Okay, so those windows stay in place. And now let's just start scrambling the cube and let's just keep track of how many of those stickers are in the windows. To start with, all 12 stickers are in the windows. And so now we're going to do like just the top here, we twist it, and the numbers change to eight, right? I just turn the right here, okay? So we've got a six here, or maybe reset, you know, do the whole cube, go to zero. <laughs> so you get all sorts of numbers here, and that could be uh, zero, two, four, six, eight. What do all those numbers have in common? They're all even. They're all even. Correct. <laughs> and so, what does that show now? What does that show now? Well, here, I've again put the dots on a real Rubik's Cube. So, if I, if I now do this, if I kind of take that edge piece here, rip it out, and put it back in flipped, what effect does that have on that sum? Well, on the number of, of dots in the windows. Well, for example, if it, 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 it starts out as even, right? It starts out as even, but if I kind of do this one now, then this one goes out of the window into the spot where there's no window. So we're going from even to odd. Okay, so what does that then show again? Well, let's see. Does not work. It doesn't work, right? So I, after I flipped like this, I can try as much as I want with regal moves. I won't be able to get back to solved. Okay. Also very nice, right? So in the physical model here, you know, I've got the windows in the outside box, so I can shuffle this any way I want, right? I'll shuffle this any way I want. And then I kind of just throw it back in the box any way I want, and I count the number of dots in the windows, and that's always going to be even. Also very nice, right? Okay, and that, those two one-glance proofs, and they pretty much get under control what's possible and what's not possible in a three by three by three. There is one more element to it, but that's not uh, explainable with physical gadgets. That's the parity of permutations that we need for that. And that's a concept that's at the heart of many branches of mathematics. So for example, it's at the heart of quadratic reciprocity, uh, alternating groups, all kinds of things. So it's a, it's a very, very important concept. And so I'm going to do a separate video on that one. I'm going to take it, my time for this one. So I'm going to just stop here for the moment and, uh, yeah, leave it at that. Okay. Mythologer, is there anything special you want to talk about today? Hmm. Oh, I forgot all kinds of things. <laughs> okay. So I've got lots of other things here, of course, right? And well, this is really it, but I've also got this, 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 and, uh, oh, there's something else. Okay, so let's just do this one here first. <laughs> so this is actually a different sort of magnet Rubik's Cube. So remember this one here? So there's you know, this really fancy pattern of magnets here. 
That was a two by two by two. Now for the three by three by three, the pattern of magnets is actually a lot easier, simpler. Have a look at this. So this is one magnet per per face that you see here. Okay. And so what's happening here? Well, you see this checkerboard pattern that's uh, sticking out here. It's you know blue and red, and that sort of suggests North Pole, South Pole. <laughs> and that's actually exactly what's happening here. So what you do here is you put all the magnets of one polarity kind of facing out and the same here, the opposite one. And then things line up automatically, no matter how you twist this thing, because the checkerboard pattern is being preserved as you, as you twist faces here. So that's quite nice. And then, well, a couple of years ago, there was this one person who made these things in his workshop. In the end, he ended up producing, I think, like 5,000 of those. So at that point, I got in touch with him and said, well, we really want one that nobody else has. So this is a physical five times five times five magnet Rubik's Cube. We built this thing. It's a monster. It's very hard to... We can't twist it. <laughs> and it's it's got like 600 magnets in it or something like this. So it's crazy. And this one, again, has a checkerboard pattern. So the distribution of magnets, the configuration of magnets is actually very simple. And then we also did a 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Um, that, you know, it looks simple here. But then if you kind of take it apart in the middle, it actually got the same pattern of magnets in here as with the 2x2x2. Two by two by two. It's a bit more complicated what's happening here. So really, really nice stuff. Now, the person who produced these things, he sort of retired from making magnets Rubik's Cubes. But when you look up magnet Rubik's Cubes today, you can actually find a lot. But when it says magnet Rubik's Cubes, what people... <laughs> what I mean today is, is this. <laughs> and so what happens here is you, uh, you twist and then there's magnets built in here that actually make the cube align properly. So if you kind of just a little bit away from, from aligning, the magnets will pull it into place. And actually most speed cubes have magnets built in these days. So the function of the magnets is very different from what it used to be. It used to be just hold the whole thing together. Now it's just to enforce alignment as best as possible. Okay. And actually that thing that just came apart here, <laughs> that was basically this thing here with the core taken out. I just grabbed the whole, the wrong one. And when you kind of put things together like this, you can see um, they, they hold together, but it's just very weak magnets here. So they, you know, you can't really uh, play with a Rubik's cube without the core in it. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to. Wait! <laughs> There's one more thing. So this is a different kind of Rubik's Cube. That's a, uh, it's a, it's a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. That's also all magnets. And actually, the last video was all about that one here. So you can also check that one out. Okay, that's really it for today.